Hi, uh, I'm going to show you around this Kunu van conversion, talk you through all the appliances, how to use them uh, from start to finish. Okay, so on the near side of the van, we've got the uh, light bar above the sliding door. This is on a small switch as you open the door. So in the evenings, you've got some light uh, on this area here outside. So in the winter months, if there's not much solar or you're not planning on driving and using your alternator charger, you can plug into shore power and uh, charge your batteries up that way. And moving around to the off side of the van, what you'll find is a boiler flue, which is your Truma Combi. Uh, this does your hot water and your heating inside the van. This gets hot when the boiler's in use, so just be wary of that. Down low by the exhaust, you've got the drain down taps. On the left, you've got the waste water, and on the right, you've got the fresh water. The waste is obviously for when your waste tank is, is full. There's a light that comes on inside the van. You can drive over a drain and get rid of all of your waste. The fresh is obviously used in winter uh, to prevent um, frost damage from your pipework or any of your water appliances. You want to drain your system completely, and you do that by releasing this tap here. Just behind the driver's door, you've got your water filler point. It's a gravity fed system, so you can use an offcut of hose or a watering can to top up your 83 litre underslung water tank. And this here is a refillable LPG bottle point. So you've got a 25 litre bottle under the van and you can uh, refill this at gas stations that have LPG. And moving into the cab, Above the uh, visor here, you've got your dimensions of your van. It's really useful, obviously, to be able to quickly know the weight, the, light, the length and the width of your van if you're going to be coming up to tunnels or, or road uh, blockages or anything like that. We've also got a reverse camera, so a seven inch monitor. This can be powered uh, just by pressing the button or when you go into the reverse gear, uh, it automatically kicks in and you can see top down view of your, of your uh, back of your van, which is really useful. Let's move around to the passenger side and you can see the passenger swivel. Okay, so the single passenger seat can swivel uh, 180 degrees. You've got this table here, which is on a boom leg so that you can sit down with your laptop, and enjoy the lovely views. When you're driving, if you want this stowed away, you can undo the clips underneath. It lifts up. You can stow this behind the driver's seat in a nice bungee, which is here. Like that, and the leg itself also comes undone, and you can store this down here as well. The seat simply swivels like this and locks into place in the forward position. Okay, you've also got a storage step, which is obviously uh, for dog food or tins of food or shoes, anything like that. Nice handy bit of kit. Got an LPG alarm down here. Up high, you've got the parcel shelf. In the parcel shelf, we tend to keep the mosquito fly net, uh, which velcros onto the surround of the sliding door here. This is the light switch for your light bar out here. You've got a coat hook. Behind your seats, you've got a curtain, which slides across in the evening to provide a bit of a thermal barrier and also a blackout. Moving in towards the shower area, you've got a nice full length mirror on the uh, back of the shower door, a couple of hooks for your towels or your dressing gowns. Inside the shower cubicle itself, we've lined this with a plastic metro tile from Rico Surfaces. We really like this product, it's really lightweight, it looks lovely, it's easy to clean and it's waterproof. We're using the Nature's Head composting toilet. Um, we've had really good feedback from customers that are living full time in their vans with this product. Uh, the solids and the liquids are separated and there's a, a, a churner that you manually churn and it dries out all of the solids uh, and, and gets rid of odours through the vent and the fan in the side of it there. Um, to remove the toilet when, you, when you're showering, you can undo the bungee, unplug the 12 volt connection and poke it back through the wall and then simply slide the toilet to the left and lift it out of the, toilet, the shower door. We've got a standard domestic mixer bar shower. Customers opted for a gold shower in this in this van, which looks really lovely. Um, and we have the hanging solution here. There is a small bar in the overhead that you can put in, and this basically provides a hanging rail uh, for clothes, wetsuits, things that you want to dry out 
because down in the bottom corner there's a small heat vent and this whole area becomes like a, a, a drying room. Above the shower you've got a roof vent here which is a Dometic Micro Hecky. Uh, you can open that up when you're static to allow ventilation to dry out the drying room. Um, when you're driving obviously to make sure it's shut to prevent it from getting damaged from the wind. Looking at the kitchen unit you've got three bits of overhead storage. You've got two touch lights looking down onto the kitchen worktop. So two of these are just storage and the third one is housing your control panel. You've got your boiler control panel, your battery monitor, your LPG level gauge, your LPG switch and your water tank heat element. Starting with your boiler control, this is the Truma Combi 2E which runs off a thermostat. So you set your room temperature to whatever you want it to be and it maintains that temperature. You can also select your water at eco which is 40 degrees hot which is 60 degrees or boost which is 70 degrees will give you a slightly longer shower this boiler can run off both gas and electricity or a mixture of gas and electricity recommended if you're going to be on hookup you can switch it to electricity to save your lpg okay this is your battery monitor which gives you the voltage of your leisure batteries which is 13.4 and your starter battery which is 12.3 um, the next menu shows how many amps are going into or out of your battery if this is a positive number then you're receiving a charge from your solar panels so at the moment it's reading five and a half amps are going into your leisure batteries and you can play around with this um, so that you can reduce your usage by turning off lights and seeing how much each appliance is using um, if it was night time obviously you wouldn't be getting any solar charge so that would be a negative number because amps will be coming out of your battery. But the idea is that you want to try and hover around zero um, or a positive number, which will mean that you can be off grid indefinitely. If I scroll through, uh, that five amps equates to 125 watts of, of power, and it gives you the state of charge as a percentage, but also in hours, how long you can remain off grid. So currently that says INF, which stands for infinite, which means that in this current state, we could be off grid indefinitely. LPG switch opens your gas bottle. You can hear a small click underneath the van, which means that gas has now been opened from the bottle. And this little button here uh, powers on the uh, level indicator, which will indicate how much gas is in the bottle. The water tank heat element has a small red light to show that the uh, water in the tank underneath is being warmed from that element. Uh, this is most useful if you're going to be in um, freezing climates such as uh, Scotland or the Alps for long periods of time and you don't want that underwater tank to be fr frozen Okay, so you've got a nice domestic sink with a double sink insert that just helps with extra prep space a nice um, Large sink for your washing up and then your tap has got different options and it can pull down and Allow you to wash your dishes um, Next to that we've got the three hob burner from Thetford. Again, it's a 12 volt ignition. So you can prepare lots of nice tasty meals and that is coupled with a uh, an oven and a grill underneath. We have a cutlery drawer here with some dividers for your knives and forks. Underneath that is a uh, bin cupboard, which has got 25 litre bin in. And you can see on the left hand side one of the heat vents which runs from your uh, Truma boiler. In this cupboard as well is the, the vent from the toilet so that goes through the floor of the van to get rid of any nasty smells. Underneath the oven you've got a big pots and pans drawer and this is held shut with two heavy duty magnets. Behind the pots and pans drawer on the floor you can see the water pump the accumulator and the gas pipe manifold. Obviously, because this houses the oven in this unit, there's a drop vent at the back, which is mandatory for LPG appliances. And on the cold water feed in, there's a stop cock or isolation valve, um, should you need to isolate the water pump. Underneath the sink, you've got a large, um, a large shelf which you can house cleaning products or anything you want to, towels, um, sprays, all that sort of stuff. And then underneath this you've got the Truma Combi boiler itself. You can see on the label 
Um, he says this boiler must be drained down if left unoccupied in cold temperatures. Lift the yellow lever into vertical position to drain the boiler. Essentially, if you leave water in your boiler and it freezes, it will misshape the, the boiler and it can cause irreparable damage. To drain down the boiler, you can see the yellow lever that goes through the floor. And when that's in the vertical position, that will dump water out the bottom of the van uh, to empty the whole pipework. We also recommend opening your shower mixer bath and your, um, your taps when you're leaving the vehicle for any period of time in cold weather. Um, if any water is trapped in the pipework, by having those um, taps open, it allows it to uh, sort of expand. It's not a closed system and therefore it's not going to cause damage or crack the pipes. In the middle, you've got a, uh, a big drawer for underwear or clothes. <laughs> And underneath that, you've got a uh, CRX 80 litre fridge, which has a small freezer compartment within it. Here you can see your dining table on a swivel arm from Lagoon, which is a really good bit of kit. And um, this has a mount, obviously, on the fixed box seat. You can also move the uh, movable box seat when you're not in transit um, into a dinette position. And there's a secondary uh, Lagoon table mount um, so you can sit opposite one another and have the table um, between you. When the seats are separated like this, you can also lower the table and use these small cushions as an insert to make a small child's bed. This is one meter 60 by 60 centimeters wide. Inside this fixed box seat, we've got some storage. So there's a fire extinguisher and a fire blanket. And you can see on the front, there's a double 230 volt socket and the inverter switch, which if I turn on, you can see the inverter is now powered on and those sockets are live. You can run appliances up to 3000 watts with this inverter. We've got one above the um, kitchen worktop and one on the box seat. Okay, on the near side wall, you've got your light switch, which does your main lights. And this is the sergeant control panel, which operates your 12 volt um, loads. You've got a main power here which turns everything on and off. Um, when you drive, it switches everything off. And um, when you go static, you have to turn it back on again. This button here does your water pump, which you can hear kicking in now. Um, once the pressure is reached in the pipework, that will stop and allows the um, shower and the taps obviously to maintain a good pressure. This button here is your water level gauge. So if I press that button, we can see that the tanks are 60% full. And when the waste tank is full, this little LED will light up red and a small alarm will beep. If you're in the shower and you hear a beeping noise, it would mean that you've got 20% left of your water capacity and therefore you obviously need to refill. Okay, you've got two options to select. You've got L, which stands for leisure battery, and you've got V, which stands for vehicle battery. If I press this button, you can see the bars are full, which means that the solar panel is currently charging your leisure battery. If I press the V button, it is now in the middle, which stands for about 12.6 volts, uh, which is a full vehicle battery. And um, all the leisure loads are now running off of that vehicle starter battery. So you don't want to leave it on V because it will drain your starter battery and you won't be able to run. The reason why you would switch it to V is if you're going static at a campsite for a couple of weeks and you're not going to be driving or if the vehicle is in storage mode, you can select V and when you're hooked up, you can press the starter battery charger in the back and it will trickle charge your starter battery so that it, it maintains being topped up. On the overheads on the near side, we've got three storage cupboards, again, all on gas struts. And at the end of these, you've got a small shelf which houses a double USB socket and a carbon monoxide alarm. Moving to the bed space, you've got a, a max fan above the bed, a really nice piece of kit that can blow air into and out of the van. Obviously, when you're using the oven, we recommend having the extractor function operating and obviously cracking a window as well. Um, there's a small shelf next to your bed which has the remote control so that you can turn um, the fan on and it will open up um, and obviously close. At, the fan can be running whilst it's still closed. But obviously when you're driving, just make sure that it's not in the upper position. You've got a couple of reading lights, um, obviously in the bed space. These are dimmable and touch switched 
and they do have a USB in the base of them so you can charge your mobile phones whilst you're in bed. And again, there's a couple of nice little uh, oak shelves for you to put your phones in or any other sort of herbs and spices. Let's move into the garage and I'll show you what the electrics looks like. So looking into the garage space, you've got a large area of rubberized matting, uh, which is nice and hard wearing. If you want to throw in your adventure gear, your bikes, your paddle boards, that sort of thing, it's all good for that. On the offside, we've got a wheel box and an external shower point. Um, so you can wash down your dogs or your muddy boots after a walk. Uh, this has got hot and cold water that comes from your Trimacombi combi boiler. You've also got an, a heat vent into the garage space, again, which just keeps this area nice and dry and regulates the temperature throughout the van. You've got 25 meters worth of hookup cable, which in the winter you might want to use if you're static for weeks at a time on a campsite or plugging in at home when you're looking to be in storage mode. We've got the um, vehicle's uh, jack, so you can obviously change a tire and access the Allen key, which obviously lowers the um, spare wheel from underneath the van. Looking onto the near side then, this is where your electric utilities are, are housed. And there are three methods of charging in this van. This is the MPPT charger from Victron's Energy. Um, it takes the uh, power generated from the solar panel and converts it into an appropriate charge profile for the lithium ion phosphate batteries. It's your primary charger and is what um, ensures that the van remains off grid for as long as possible. This is the DC DC charger from Victron Energy. It has a 30 amp output and it connects the alternator when you're driving the va van into your leisure batteries to keep them topped up along with your vehicle battery itself. This is your Blue Smart uh, mains charger from Victron Energy. It's got a 30 amp output and we have this as a backup or emergency charger. If you're static for weeks at a time and there's no solar or little solar, then you can always plug your van in at a campsite or at home to keep your leisure batteries topped up. This is the 3000 watt inverter from Sunshine Solar. This allows you to run 230 volt appliances whilst off grid. It converts your 12 volt supply from your leisure batteries into a 240 volt output. And this uh, cable here goes to the uh, RCD and consumer unit and then the double sockets in the living space. This is a changeover switch in the back of your van. This selects the 230 volt supply for the double sockets in your van conversion. You can have two different sources of supply 230 volt. The primary when you're off grid is the inverter setting, which is number one. This will use the inverter to uh, power your 230 volt sockets and it is turned on via the remote on the seat box in the living area. The second option is when you're at a campsite or if you're in storage mode at home, you can plug your van in using the hookup cable and all of the double sockets will be supplied by the electronic hookup. So this consumer unit on the left hand side, you can see the 12 volt fuses uh, for all the 12 volt circuits. And if anything blows, you just replace the fuses with a like for like ampage. And on the right hand side, you've got your domestic consumer unit for your 230 volts it's complete with an rcd and three circuit breakers every time you plug in your van at a campsite or hookup you should press the test button on the rcd and this will trip the rcd what that does is just ensures that the uh, mechanical aspects within the rcd are still functioning and it doesn't seize up itself the sergeant consumer unit also houses a starter battery charger switch um, when you're going into storage mode or if you're static in your van for weeks at a time and you won't be driving, it's good to select the V battery button on the control panel and you can also then turn on this charger switch which will trickle charge your lead acid vehicle starter battery so that it doesn't get drained and stop the van from starting. Next to the inverter and the fridge, we've got the battery box, which houses the 320 amp hour lithium battery from Roma. So looking inside the battery box, you can see the tied down uh, battery tray uh, keeps this battery secure to the vehicle floor. There is a main switch which can isolate the 12 volts uh, being supplied from this battery. And there is a, a positive bus bar, which houses the fuses for all the chargers and the 12 volt circuits. And there is also a large mega fuse which runs to the inverter. 
We think it's really important when you install a battery to put the date of installation on it. And this allows you to understand how old the battery is and when it might need replacing. To charge your leisure batteries when you pull up at a campsite, the first thing to do is to select the electronic hookup option on your changeover switch. All of your 240 volt sockets will now be supplied by your hookup. This plug here is your leisure battery charger plug. If you switch that on, your uh, blue smart charger, which is next to your consumer unit, will now charge your leisure batteries with 30 amps. So we've plugged in the mains charger. There's the, the leisure battery voltage, starter battery voltage. You can see 26.4 amps is now going into the lithium batteries. Because we've plugged the van in at campsite hookup, you can see there's a small plug symbol on your Truma Combi control panel. This indicates that the 240 is now being supplied to the Truma and you can select mix one, mix two, which is gas and electric, or just electric one or just electric two when you decide to put your heating or your hot water on. And when you leave the hookup point, all you need to do is switch this off and return back to inverter mode. One of the other features that they've got in this van conversion is motorhome Wi-Fi. There's a large antenna on the roof and this supplies your mobile router in the garage space. So all you would need to get uh, mobile data is a SIM card and data plan. And you can plug this in and stream Netflix with your 4G or 5G signal. Lastly, there's a small light uh, just on the back here with the switch. And obviously when you open up the garage, if it's dark outside, you can uh, illuminate the whole area. And that concludes the video of this van tour, going into detail of all the controls that you'll find in your Kunu conversion. Uh, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content from us. Thank you. Bye bye.